Hello, a warm welcome to Verso Primary School. My name is Claire Hodgson and I'm the head teacher here. Now usually we would be sitting in the hall having a cup of tea and a biscuit and we'd be able to watch this presentation and be in real person. But unfortunately that's not going to happen today. So um, this is the next best thing. We've got a virtual version of myself and the reception team. So I'm going to talk you through um, a few of these slides. Um, I'm going to try to keep it really brief. And then I will hand over to the reception team who have also got a slideshow for you. So, at our school we uh, work a lot on children's mindset and we adopt uh, a kind of a yes we can approach, a positive mindset. And we encourage children to get stuck in and have a go at answering their own questions and being curious about the world. And um, I like this image because it shows children doing things for themselves and excited about what they're doing and that they're probably going to get a bit mucky because they are going to do things which are in real life. Um, I've also got a, a question here, I wonder what would happen if, and that's because we encourage children to wonder and be curious about the world and then explore their own questions about what they want to know. The way that we get children to um, have that kind of um, mindset, we're, we're very conscious of the words that we use, and so the language that we choose to use around the children is very carefully considered. Um, so instead of perhaps here, like we've got on this um, poster here, I can't do that, you would say a bit more of a, a practical approach to it and a bit more of a positive approach to it is, I'm going to train my brain in that. I'm going to do, I'm going to work on this a bit more. Um, and mistakes um, are part of that. And we uh, really value mistakes and failures because there is so much to learn from um, that happening. And we say mistakes actually are the way to improve. And a lot of real life comparisons are made there. So inventors wouldn't have invented um, the airplane or many of the more complicated things in um, uh, in, in our society if things um, hadn't gone wrong lots of times and they pick themselves up, dust themselves off and keep trying. So we really do value the um, persistence and the difficulty that children face as part of the journey that can't be avoided because it is the journey of being resilient and um, learning, being a good learner. Here I've put at the bottom boys are and girls are and that's kind of a, a, a that's linked to what language and it's also uh, that we use and it's linked to um, the mindset of children and the mindset of adults who are around those children that we don't inadvertently uh, set children up with caps on what they can be stopping them from being um, the full wonderful human being that they could be by telling them that they're not and that's linked to um, some of the stories that you hear being said about boys and girls but about boys lately it's been they're dirty or they're messy or they're silly and you see t-shirts with those sorts of slogans on they're quite dangerous for children because it's telling that child that you are a certain thing which is quite, um, quite negative uh, and also that you know that they, they can't be believed in they're not being believed in that they can be better than that or they're different to that um, and also girls uh, often are told, you know, they're pretty or there's something about their physical appearance um, on lots of t-shirts. So it's just something to be aware of and it's something that we're really careful with um, at school that we don't feed into any of those um, kind of limiting stories. Um, this slide just quickly uh, goes over how important you are. And you are so important in the um, success of your child just by showing that you care, asking how was their day, oh that's really good you've tried really hard with that, um, praising effort and underlying skills rather than the achievement um, actually shifts your child's mindset too. So consider swapping and um, saying clever girl um, to that's a really great effort, you've really had some good ideas then, uh, rather than talking about the outcome. It's a, it's a much healthier way to view learning and to view um, failures too. Uh, so. It's, it's, a, it's a good one to just think, what do I praise with my child? Um, is it the outcome or is it the effort that went into the process? And just a quick 
slide there about the importance of reading, it can't be underestimated. Just reading a story at bedtime, there's the massive difference that can make to a child's success as an adult. Um, it's linked much more, actually, uh, than anything to do with money, uh, how successful your child will be. Um, you, reading to children has a huge influence over them having better empathy, having more vocabulary, being better writers and readers themselves, um, and feeling less depressed as an adult. And on this slide, um, this is linked to our growth mindset approach. It's a very short video, um, which is a really lovely, uh, simple way to compare it to the um, famous story of the hare and the tortoise. So this is one that we show the children too. So um, it's about three minutes long, not very long, um, and it'd be great if you could just watch this as well. What is a growth mindset? We can liken the theory of growth and fixed mindset to the story of the tortoise and the hare. To have a fixed mindset means to believe one's basic abilities, intelligence and talents are just fixed traits. A growth mindset means that you understand that talents and abilities can be developed through effort, practicing and persistence. People with a fixed mindset often develop and peak before their peers, appearing to be more intelligent and successful than everyone else. However, this is a dangerous trap to fall into. The moment we believe that success is determined by an ingrained level of ability, we will be brittle in the face of adversity. This is what happens to the hare. The tortoise, however, with a growth mindset, continues to power through and work hard, overtaking the hare eventually and winning the race. Nice one, Terry. Thanks, narrator. You're welcome, Terry. How many of us think ourselves as not mass people, or creative, or sociable, or athletic. If we are to fulfill our potentials, we have to start thinking differently. We are not chained or bound to our current abilities. Take this tree for example. It needs to be fed with lots of minerals and food for it to grow, just like you do. By continuing to nurture and care for this tree, it can grow taller and stronger than other trees. The trunk and branches will literally explode with growth, just like your brain. Your brain is malleable and physically can change size and grow. Even more so at a young age, the activity and growth of the brain during your short teenage years is phenomenal. So how do you do this? Well, there's no shortcut or secret solution. It's as simple as hard work, commitment and perseverance. In any chosen field or career path, you are certain to have some level of failure at one point. But at each pitfall we come across, you must learn to overcome it. There is a popular movie quote that goes like this. Why do we fall, Bruce? So we can learn to pick ourselves back up. Batman wasn't born with any superpowers, abilities or talents. And just as Gotham's Dark Knight understood, he had to train relentlessly to succeed. So must you. Right now these fixed mindset learners might be ahead of others, but they are afraid of failure. And when they reach the peak that they're comfortable with, they'll just stay there. They will never reach their full potential. Failure is the almost essential step to success. And as the growth mindset continues to improve, they will overtake the rest. If you feel like you're in a fixed mindset, don't lose hope because there is a lot we can do to change that. But start by listening to our fixed mindset voice. And when you hear it, talk back with a growth mindset voice. If you hear, I can't do it, add yet. Fixed mindsets can change. So what mindset are you in? And so that's a kind of a, a nice short summary of um, our approach. And now I'd love to hand over to the team um, of the, the reception classes. Uh, we can't wait to meet you in real person. Um, stay safe. Thank you, Miss Hodgson. We're so excited to see you. I'm Miss Solomon and I'm the teacher in Fox class. I work with Mrs. Cruz on the left.
everyone, I'm Mrs Harding. I can't wait to meet you. I'm the Badger's class teacher and I will be working with Mrs Horan. Now I'm going to take you through our slideshow where we have some information for you. So this slide gives you a brief overview about what a sort of typical day in reception might look like. It might be a bit different to this, but we'd like to give you a little bit of a flavour of what the day will include. We always start our day with a mindfulness minute so that our children are calm and ready to learn. A usual school day starts at 8.30. If there are any further upcoming changes to these timings or the school day, we'll let you know as soon as we know. This slide is about lunch times. We have an amazing chef who cooks some delicious dinners. Please read through this slide for more details. Here is a sample lunch menu. If you're a working parent, we've got some extras for you here and you'll see some of our prices for the before and after school care. The next few slides will give you some information about the earliest curriculum and how we plan and assess. This slide gives you some information on the characteristics of effective learning. These are the principles that we use to help build effective learners in school. Here are the seven areas of learning that are within the earliest curriculum. What are called the prime areas consist of personal, social, emotional development, communication and language and physical development. And these are really fundamental because they really lay the foundations for children's success in all other areas of learning. The four specific areas are maths, literacy, expressive arts and design, and understanding the world. Here you'll see um, some information about assessment in reception. We talk about GLD, a good level of development, and that means when at the end of the EYFS in reception, a child has met all developmental goals for an average five-year-old. And we'll report that to you. It is a statutory assessment that all children throughout the UK are assessed against. Here you can see an example of what your new uniform will look like. This is very exciting. Book bags will be available from school. We will hand them out to your children on the first day and you can pay for them at the office. They will be £8 and there'll be more details to follow on this. Here's what you need to come to school with. As you can see, we talk about dressing yourself. Dressing yourself is a key part of learning in reception so that the children can become independent and have that self-belief and confidence to feel in control. What we're aiming for and what we need your help with, if possible over the summer, is for your child to have a go at putting on their own clothes. And that means having a go at doing up their trousers, doing a zip, undoing and doing buttons up, checking they put their shoes on the right feet, all of these key key skills and that way um, we, we will be giving them lots and lots of time and giving them time to have a go and get it wrong and encouraging them that they can work it out because after a while they will get there. So we really, really believe in lots and lots of stories here at birthday. And sometimes the best thing is a simple story. It's hugely important to develop language and vocabulary. And this then has a massive impact on children's access to all areas of learning. So as many stories, conversations, making up stories, looking at pictures in books and talking about them as possible would be really, really great. On this slide, you can find some important dates. You'll be sent some more details on these events, but it's a little overview of um, some of the dates to put in the calendar. So we'll see you on Wednesday, the 23rd of July. There'll be small group tours of the classroom, safely and socially distanced. We'll be able to show you inside of the classroom where things will go. Um, maybe your child can look for their peg and we can, we're here to answer any questions and it will be lovely, lovely to see lots of your faces and, and meet you. If you can't make this, please don't worry as we will be inviting you to a teddy bears picnic after the summer, which we're really looking forward to and we could take you on a tour then. 
You will shortly receive more details on timings of these events. Here's some information on some of the things that you can get involved in if you'd like. It's really, really great. Um, we really appreciate it if parents get involved and help help the school. Last time our FOB, so Friends of Birthday, raised money to buy children iPads and this made a massive difference to our school. Um, a parent rep is someone from each class who can be a point of contact, who can make sure the class Facebook page is updated and that you are kept informed on what's going on. They meet with other parent reps um, throughout the school and our deputy head throughout the year to get information and answers and offer and pass on any thoughts and ideas. Finally, we'd like to wish you all a wonderful and safe summer. We're looking forward to seeing you all in September and for a very exciting year ahead.